Okay, so now let's look at inputs, okay? Now, as we already showed, whether or not you choose an audio instrument track or an audio track, the choices of output at the output slot setting is identical for either type of track channel strip, okay? But it's the input that's different. If I choose this audio track, the input slots live in the and out section above the output slot, okay? And you can see that the input slot on this channel strip for an audio track just here is different to the input slot on the channel strip for an audio instrument track okay so let's look at that first we'll choose this audio track and the thing that you need to bear in mind is that an audio track and its channel strip or an audio instrument track and its channel strip can be thought of as a single entity joined together right okay so now in the case of audio tracks Audio tracks and their channel strip can be mono or stereo for recording mono or stereo signals, okay? Okay, now at the moment this audio track and its channel strip are set to record stereo. So the channel strip for the selected audio track has got a left and right side to its meter, okay? Because this is a stereo track and channel strip, okay? Also below the meter the little icon there has got like a pair of overlapped circles. Okay, so I go to the input output area of the channel strip for this audio track, which is in stereo, right? And I drop down the input by left clicking on it. And my choices of input are going to be some input from which I'm going to take an audio signal. Okay, so my choices are no input at all, my sound card inputs, in this case I've only got a stereo sound card. So I'm offered the choice of input 1, 2. That's the only choice I have, right? But I can also take the audio signal coming in on the input from a... Like I can take that signal from a bus as my input. Or from a sound card input. Or no input at all. All right? Now, remember this track and channel strip is in stereo. And I only have a stereo sound card, which only has input 1 and 2. So when I drop, so with this track and channel strip in stereo, when I drop down my input slot and I go down to look at my available sound card inputs to choose, I can only choose input one two because it's the only pair of inputs I've got, and because the track and the channel strip are set in stereo, it's it, it's looking for a stereo input to record a stereo signal. All right, so I can only choose input one two because I've only got two inputs. If I put the track and its channel strip into mono by left clicking on this overlap pair of circles icon below the meter on the channel strip, okay, now the meter only has you know a single column, it doesn't have a left and right side, and now this track and its channel strip is set into mono mode. And if I then drop down the input slot, my choice of sound card inputs is now either input one, the left input in mono or input to the right input on my sound card in mono. All right, I can choose now either as a mono input. OK, now if I had an 8 input sound card and this track and channel strip was set as it is now in mono, I would have a choice of any of the 8 inputs on my sound card. Input 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7, or 8. If I put the track and its channel strip into stereo again, and drop down the input slot and then went to my sound card inputs. If I had an 8 input sound card, I would now have the choice of input 1, 2, input 3, 4, input 5, 6, or input 7, 8 as my stereo inputs. I could choose any of those four stereo inputs um, if I had an 8 input sound card. Okay, all right. But whether or not your track, your audio track and its channel strip are set to stereo or mono no matter how many sound card inputs you have to choose from you are always given the choice of making it no input at all or choosing a bus as an input but we'll come to all that later buses and stuff like that okay all right with an audio instrument track you can clearly see the input slot has a plug-in in it there it is okay and the input slot of the channel strip of an audio instrument track always has a plug-in instrument in it unless it has no plug-in at all okay all right now why is the input of the channel strip of an 
audio instrument track why is it always a plug-in instrument well you've got to think back to hardware studios again in a hardware studio I wouldn't be using a plug-in synth I'd be using a real hardware synth so my real hardware synth would sit on a keyboard stand next door to the mixer and then I would take a lead out of the synth and plug it in to the input on my mixer channel strip so I could hear the actual synth and that's what's happening here the input of this channel strip for an audio instrument track is the actual synth itself because we need to hear the synth signal coming into the input of this channel strip so we can actually hear it and add it and mix it into our tune right okay now as far as the signal flow is concerned again it's just like an old school studio and remember this is our tape recorder right with multiple record tracks so these track headers here this is the record head now the re record head on a tape recorder on a multi-track here is like this big block and the electrical signals in other words the audio signals coming from the microphones and the line inputs flow into the record head across the record head and then off to the mixer okay now as those signals from the instruments being played flow across the record head you have the choice of hitting record and actually recording them to the tape that's being dragged across the head by the two reels of the tape recorder right okay but this is a modern sequencer but it's exactly the same principle if I choose an audio instrument track this type of track records MIDI data which triggers plug-in instruments so I'm playing my master keyboard, the MIDI data is flowing into the recorder, this area, right, across the record head, this bit, at which point I can hit record and actually take a recording of that signal as it flows across the record head. The MIDI data then leaves the record head, goes off here to the channel strip, and the first thing it does is it triggers the instrument which is at the top of the channel strip, at the channel strip input. The MIDI data flows across the record head, triggers the instrument and then the instrument which is at the input of the channel strip sends its audio signal down the channel strip and that signal then flows down the channel strip and leaves that channel strip heading off to the destination you've assigned in the output slot here all right in the case of an audio track it's the same again the audio signal is coming in from a mic or line input it's flowing across the record head at which point i can hit record and take a recording of it as it passes across the record head the audio signal then flows out of the record head off to the mixer channel strip, flows down the mixer channel strip and leaves that mixer channel strip heading off to the destination that you've assigned in the output slot. All right. It's as simple as that. Now, I showed you already that the outputs are identical for either type of track, the output choices. And if we look, we can see that our output choices, to remind ourselves, is no output, uh, the stereo output, surround out, or we can send the signal out from a channel strip into a bus instead of to an output. Okay, So what are buses and why would we want to send the output of a channel strip into a bus instead of to the stereo output? Why would we want to do that? Right. So let's look at buses next and why we'd want to send a signal into a bus instead of to the output. Okay. <laughs> 